Hey guys, um, today's video is about replacing the, the disc brake rotors um, on your Pajero. Now, I've had uh, this squeaking, screeching noise coming from my back brakes for quite a while. Um, I've replaced the brake pads, uh, put fresh Bendix brake pads not long ago. I think there's a video there on my channel about doing that. And I've taken it to the Mitsubishi dealership here in Gaten and they've advised me that um, the brake rotors are fine. But I don't think they are. Uh, and I think they are the ones that are the culprit here. I don't know if you can see even from here, you can tell how glazed they are. And I took it to Pedders for a suspension check uh, a couple of weeks ago. And they told me the same thing that the rear rotors are extremely glazed and should be replaced so i've gone ahead and bought a, a new set of um aftermarket disc brake rotors uh they're from dba which is uh, a decent brand for this uh, this sort of thing um i've gone with the street series because most of my driving is on bitumen and uh, not off-road and uh, from my conversation with the staff at DBA over the phone, um, I gather that the Street Series is quite capable of even um, providing good braking ability even when you're doing four-wheel driving off-road. So the particular uh, part number uh, for a fourth generation Mitsubishi Pajero um, with a long wheelbase uh, for the rear rotors is DBA 2219E. Um, just make sure that yeah, you get the right part and the right size of the rotors um, in the long wheelbase the Rotors around 33 centimeter um, So that's that's the one you need So We'll just go ahead. It's essentially the same steps mostly as we did for the brake pad replacement with a couple of extra straps of course for replacing the rotor so It's quite a warm day. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll just park the car in a way that we get a bit of shade from the shadow of the car and then I'll probably even take the awning out at least for this side to provide me with a bit of shade so I'll just go ahead do that and uh, then we'll yeah check the car up uh, remove the wheel and then get to the rotor okay so we got ourselves a bit of shade by parking the car opposite the sun direction and uh, deploying the awning um, so Essentially, yeah, the next step is to uh, use this easy wheel nut remover. Makes it really easy to remove the, the lug nuts on the wheels. Um, I've uh, shown it in the video on the brake pad replacement, so you can have a look there to see how it works. Essentially makes it a lot easier to undo the wheels on your, uh, your wheel nuts. So we'll undo them uh, while the car is um, seated and uh, then we'll jack the car up and put the jack stand and then take the wheel off okay so here we are we've uh, checked the car from the jack point under there um, put the jack stand remove the wheel and put it under the car just for safety uh, now at this point it's probably a good idea to take your handbrake off lift up your hood and open the brake fluid reservoir um, the next step is to just undo these two nuts, this one here, this one here. Undo these two nuts so you can open the brake calipers and then move them out of the way of the brake pad of the disc rotor. And, uh, and then we'll get on to removing the rotor. At this point, it might be a good idea to just put on some gloves. Uh, just because brake dust um, is carcinogenic, um, so you don't want to touch it or inhale it if possible. Okay, so we've removed the two bolts um, that were holding the brake caliper um, over its housing here. They're size 17 bolts. Um, these are the two bolts here. This one, the other one. Um, they were fairly tight. So for the bottom one, I used my impact wrench. Um, for the top one, um, I couldn't position it in there because of the strut here. I just, just couldn't get it in the right position. So. I just used a, a breaker bar so but um, essentially yeah now they're both gone so the next step is to take the brake pads out and what you can use here is a flathead screwdriver 
So you just need to gently pry it under at the top and bottom and just gently pry them both out. Once you've done that, um, this assembly can move out and then you'll be able to um, get the disc rotor off. So we'll just go ahead, remove the brake pads. They are fairly new, um, so yeah, no need to replace them, but you do need to remove them to free the disc rotor of the brake caliper. Okay, so we got the two brake pads off. Um, as you can see, um, due to the glazed disc, um, it suffered some glazing on the surface here as well, um, but that's okay. What we'll do next is to remove the whole assembly of the brake caliper. So um, there's two more bolts. Uh, there's this one here and this one down there. So they're both 17 millimeters as well. So we'll just go ahead and remove them and just take off the whole assembly. Okay guys, so we've uh, taken off the, the rest of the assembly that was holding the disc rotor in. Um, essentially the two bolts were these two 17 millimeter bolts so same way of taking them out with a breaker bar or an impact wrench and now the disc uh, you should be able to just loosen it and take it off so i'll just take the disc off and uh, we'll clean it up uh, tidy it up um, and then we'll put the new disc on okay so the disc is off um, you might need to use a little mallet or a, a rubber hammer just to sort of move it around because it rusted into the place so Essentially, the next step is to just use a, <coughs> a brake cleaner and, uh, and a brush just to wipe off everything, clean up everything um, before, you, um, before you put your new disc on, which is, which is right here. So I'll just go ahead and clean it up and then we'll put the new disc on. Okay, so we've just given a bit of a brush and a clean with this uh, brake cleaner and this brush here. And uh, we'll just put on the new disc uh, rotor over there and then we'll just secure it with one of the lug nuts while we're putting the brake calipers and the brake cats back in place. Okay, so we've put the, the new um, disc rotor on and uh, we've put the, the assembly back on, um, tightened those nuts at the back so that thing's secure. Now, before I put the brake pad back on, uh, I might use this I grabbed from um, Super Cheap a while back. It's a Ceramosil brake part lubricants, and um, it's quite useful to use um, on your uh, brake components, um, including the, the pins. Um, so using the component here, uh, the lubricant here, um, also on the shims, so on the brake pad shims, um, putting that on and putting it on the contact edge of the piston. Um, it just helps um, reduce the metal to metal um, abrasion and contact and provides better longer lasting um, uh, brake pads um, as well as sort of working as a bit of an anti-seize when you use it on the pin. So I'll just go ahead, I'll use this and uh, then we'll put the brake pads back on and then we'll put the caliper and the piston back on. Thank you. Okay, so I've just put this, um, this lubricant onto the, uh, to the pins. And I've put it on the shims on both sides, um, inside and the outside. And I've just put some on the piston as well. And I think that should do for now. Um, I did need to move the piston back in using a clamp. Um, just, yeah, because the brake pads had sort of worn a, a tiny bit and the piston had come in. So put it back, I, I moved it back in. And then um, now we can just um, slide, this, slide this onto the brake pads here and then put the pins in um, and tighten them. And that should be it um, before we can put the wheel back on. Okay, so that's all done. I uh, put the lubricant over the shims and the piston there. Um, this has all been tightened back into the place, the brake pad assembly. Now, the only thing left to do is put the wheel back on and put the lug nuts on, just balance it and tighten it uh, by hand while the car is checked up and then lower the car and uh, tighten it further um, so we'll just do that, put the wheel back on next and uh, go from there. Okay, so we just put the wheel back on, um, just hand tighten the lug nuts and then we'll just um, go ahead, lift the jack up further, take the jack stand out, bring the jack down, bring the car down and then tighten the lug nuts further. So that's all done. Um, essentially that's it. Uh, once you've got the car back down, just tighten the lug nuts further and uh, and that's it. Um, so that's essentially the disc rotor replacement for a fourth generation Mitsubishi Pajero. Same thing uh, for replacing the brake pads as well. Um, and yeah, exactly the same of doing on the other side. So 
pretty much similar to most cars. But yeah, that's it. Uh, the new Discorder is uh, looking good and hopefully it lasts a while. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. If you did, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Thank you.